What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 109. Now we start today's episode off by once again reviewing the deal we'd agreed with Roma for Magnanelli, their young striker. It was £3 million plus commie for their 73 overall rated 21 year old striker. But instead of accepting that deal as he was waiting to come in, he had signed a contract and everything, he was just waiting for the go ahead. Instead, we're going to sell Comi, who was included in that deal to Frozenone for a million quid and leave Magnanelli at the Stadio Olimpico because in a last episode, if you missed the end of it, we signed Lacadia for £4 million. He's 77 overall, a decent striker coming in there, and for £4 million, a bit of a bargain, really. And Magnanelli coming in would be behind Backer, would now be behind Lacadia, and potentially, depending on what happens this season and what formation we play, also possibly maybe behind Fakir as well, a new signing. So he'd be third-choice striker at the absolute best anyway, and the fact of the matter is, I think with just a little bit of money left over, we shouldn't be looking to sign a third-choice striker really should be looking elsewhere, either improving the main striker role, buying a better new first team striker, or uh, looking to sign some players and strengthen the team elsewhere. Because he could be a decent youngster, you know, 21 years old, 73 overall, could have some good potential. But for me, I think personally speaking, we'll keep him at the Stadio Olimpico for the time being and possibly look into buying him uh, another time. But uh, still, we put in a bid for uh, Watford's Donnarumma as well. Now, I don't want to sign every single old Watford player, um, because quite frankly, I think that would be kind of pointless really to move teams hit by every single player we used to to have but I don't mind signing like two or three players and uh, we've already signed Ryan Taller and Donnarumma is PLO's regen so it would make sense to bring into the San Siro wouldn't it PLO of course a former Milan player would make sense to bring into the San Siro and we'll wait and see what they say we put a straight uh, swap deal with Montalivo for Donnarumma but Watford said no Montalivo is four ratings higher at 80 overall but he's 34 years old and he's a player who quite frankly I would rather just sell like I, I don't really feel the need to keep him here and uh, be, I put him on the transfer list, but no clubs are coming in for him. So we may as well try and swap him out. And if we can give him to Watford, plus a bit of uh, money for Donnarumma, I would totally take that. But to also put a new bid here for Andre Silva, uh, the Juventus striker, 23 years old, 82 overall. He looks really good. And we put a straight swap deal with Backer here. And we shall wait and see what they say. And we did the same with Martial here at Manchester United because we haven't signed Magnanelli now, that young striker. But I was thinking with Carlos Backer, despite the fact he scored the first and so far only goal of our Milan adventure so far in the season opener against Lazio. He is in the final year of his contract. He is 32 years old and set to decrease probably in the first couple of seasons. Martial may be two ratings lower than him and Andre Silva one rating lower but they're far younger than Baca and I'm not going to give a new deal to Baca as well because Baca uh, despite scoring against Lazio wants a 40 grand a week wage increase which is just ridiculous. I went to the contract negotiations and went to give him a new contract just to see what he'd ask for and it was 40 grand extra week and I was thinking there's absolutely no way I'm giving you that so Baca is not going to be staying here at the San Siro past the 12 months and I was thinking if we can't sell the guy then we may as well try and swap him for a younger forward so instead of uh, keeping Baca here we're going to try and get rid of the guy and not see him leave in January on a free transfer to a new team or just get released come the end of his contract come the end of the year if we can't sell him but uh, as you can see here we put in bids for Denea, Jesse Rodriguez, uh, also Andre Silva and uh, Anthony Martial as well. City, round Madrid, United and Juventus said no to all of those bids though, which was a bit annoying because transfer deadline day has just begun. And I was thinking, right, I've got 10 hours to work my magic, see what deals I can pull off. First thing I see, a transfer offer unacceptable for all four of those players. So that wasn't really great. But if we put a new bid for Martial and also a new bid for Donna Rumor as well, I really would like to get hold of PLO's regen, but I'm just not too sure they will get rid of the guy. We put in a bit of 6.5 million pounds though. And also offer one of our players to pick a Nokia, I think it is, uh, too. And we'll wait and see what they say as they put in a new bid for PLO's regen. And also a new bid for Andre Silva as well. You know, 10 hours to go on the clock, really. There's, there's enough time to sort out at least one deal here. But I was thinking, I just want to make sure I get one of them done. And I put in a bid here of £3 million plus backer for the 23-year-old striker currently at Juventus. Also a new bid for uh, Jason Denea as well. Can't really see this one coming off, though. Just £1 million plus in Kulu. I can't really see City saying yes to this deal but uh, following out once again more transfer bids rejected all four clubs once again saying no uh, no from Watford no from Juventus no from United and City as well so a new bid for Donnarumma we put in a bid of I think it was 8 million pounds sorry 8.5 million pounds plus Piccanocchio this time and we shall wait and see what they say and I also put in a new bid for Anthony Martial of Manchester United as well because again I do take the point with Baca you know he scored on the opening day against Lazio we could give him a new contract but at 32 years old you know 40 grand a week is not too much to pay 
for a new deal for an 83 overall rated striker. But for me, I'd rather swap him out and get a, a younger striker in to replace him and possibly be better in many years to come. And as you can see, Manchester United did accept the bid of three and a half million pounds plus backer for Anthony Martial. And this could be a really good deal for us because again, it may seem like an overspend to begin with, swapping out a striker who's currently two ratings better, but you've got to look at Martial's potential and think surely he could get into the mid to high 80s and higher than what Backer is right now. And if he starts scoring right from the beginning as well and plays well, he'll be our main striker here in this uh, Milan team as well. He'll be our new number nine. He could potentially hit 83 before the season's already over. And by that time, Backer, if he kept in, may have already started decreasing in stats. So because of that, we're going to wait and see what uh, Manchester United uh, say. But as you can see here, uh, Manchester United I did accept the three and a half million pounds deal. I was going to say, wait, well, see what Martial said. And Martial did decline his first contract, but instead did decide to come in and accept the deal. He's on 80 grand a week here, three and a half million pound deal. And again, this is this is one of those signings right here, which I'm sure it's going to be a mixed bag in terms of response from you guys when you're watching this video. You guys may be sitting there thinking, wow, I would not have done that deal. That is a really bad one. I think you've overpaid for a player who may not develop, may not do well for you, whereas Backer already scored on the opening day. But for me, here at Milan, I'm going to take this gamble. I'm going to sign Martial, 23 years old. 81 overall right now. Again, three and a half million pounds plus an aging striker who was set to decrease in the first season and could potentially as well... Um end up uh, leaving the club for free in January or come the end of the season. We'll take Martial in plus that three and a half million pounds on backer and we shall wait and see whether it turns out to be a good piece of business or not. But also as well, uh, one final signing on deadline day two as the clock was running down. Donnarumma finally after about 10 bids, Watford did accept a straight bid of nine million pounds for PLO's regen. We give him a contract. We shall wait and see what he says as Piccinocchio ended up going to another club instead as he got sold there. He declined his first contract as you can see at the second time asking Donnarumma does agree a new deal and Alex Donnarumma is going to come in and PLO's region will sign for £9 million. So two deadline day signings. Martial coming in from Manchester United for £3.5 million plus Carlos Backer. Donnarumma, PLO's region coming in for £9 million. A straight £9 million deal there. We have cleaned out our transfer budget. We spent pretty much every single penny the Milan board gave us. The two final signings of the window, Donnarumma and also Martial as well. How how will they do in this Milan team? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how they'll do. They'll go straight into the first team and the Milan transition is well and truly underway in the first summer transfer window. So the board gave us £56.5 million pounds, and as you can see, we spent more than that as we sold on some players as well. In total, in our first transfer window with Milan, we spent a whopping £69.5 million pounds on new players. So tons of new players coming into Milan. We signed 10 players in total in this summer transfer window. 10 10 players got signed in our first transfer window with Milan. You know, when a manager goes into a new club, it's always a key theme, you know, what are they going to do with the squad? How are they going to shape it to make it their squad? I wasn't expecting to make 10 signings in the first summer transfer window, but that's exactly what happened. 10 new players coming into the team, and I, I'm pretty pleased with the business we've done. You know, 69.5 million pounds is a lot, but when you look at the players that have come in here, look at the age of the players. So many of them are so young, and there's a few teenagers in there, lots of early 20-year-olds as well. It's a really young team we're building with Milan, and the players that are leaving the club as well are in their late 20s to early early 30s. We're beginning to transition the Milan side from an aging one to a young one right off the bat. And although the side may not be significantly better in terms of quality, it is significantly younger in terms of the average age. And that was the main thing when coming into Milan. You know, there were so many aging players here, so many players only on one-year contracts. And there are still quite a lot of players still left on the club here that are still only have one year left in their contracts. There were quite a few players here who, quite frankly, were just, you know, too old really to be considered part of the future here with Milan. Instead, they were just part of the furniture. So really, the main thing we had to do was make the squad younger right from the beginning and six nine and a half million pounds spent on a lot of players I know you know you look at that squad and think really that wasn't the best of business but to be honest you'll look at the players coming into the first 11 as well six of the 10 new players coming into the Milan squad you know 10 new players getting signed seriously six new six of those players are going to go straight to the first 11 Martial Fakir Ryan Taylor Capello Sidi Gadi and also Donnarumma as well and you've got the likes of Lacadia on the bench as well and the free agents too you know in my opinion we've 
done some all right business in terms of making the squad look a lot younger and that was the main thing because with Milan they were on the verge of collapse really before we joined them they had so many aging players and again so many players on just one year deals as well they were looking like a side who didn't really look like they knew what they were doing in terms of building for the future instead they were building a retirement home at the San Siro it was ridiculous we changed that we changed it completely right from the beginning there's still a long way to go still a lot of work to do but I'm excited for the potential of this squad it should be a really good fun challenge and now the first time the transfer window is out of the way as well I'm looking forward to seeing how our players will do now that the transfer window has slammed shut well they can be really the heartbeat of the team these central midfield players and we've got a new one making his debut today what do you make of it Alan well I'm uh, impressed by the signing I think he'll give them a bit more composure in the middle of the park he can get up and down and he's a good pass for the ball it's a debut for the new forward today yeah and with that comes a little bit of pressure because everyone's expecting you to score the goals the fans are I think and for the first and only game of today's episode here, we will take on Sampdoria at the San Siro. So Martial making his debut and Donnarumma as well making his debut as well. Pirlo's regen. Of course, Pirlo spent 10 years at Milan. So hopefully Donnarumma will have just as long and as fruitful as a career as Pirlo did. But uh, taking on Sampdoria for the first and only game of today's episode here. First chance would fall to us in the 31st minute. Anthony Martial was played through here with a fantastic through ball by De Chilio. But sadly, our new number nine couldn't hit the target and the show went into the side net and behind for a goal kick. In the 41st minute here, another good chance for us to open the scoring. Martial finds Fakir here and the French strikers link up. He plays the ball inside towards Martial. He goes for a back heel shot. It's a great block by the defender and then Consogli makes a great save and Sampdoria get the ball behind for a corner. So still 0-0 in this game. And from the corner, El Shirai crossed the point to the centre. Yeah, the header is won by Martial but once again, it's another great save by the goalkeeper having a fantastic half and he ensures that going into the break, it was still Milan nil, Sampdoria nil. So goalless at the break. We have been playing better but Sampdoria's pass accuracy was the really frustrating thing in this game. They'd have more possession, they were keeping hold of the ball so well. And in the second half, they were time wasting to the extreme. In the 81st minute here, they went to the corner flag and tried to uh, hold on to the ball and stop us from winning the ball back to get any more attacks. Frankly, we would win the ball back here and have one final chance as Suzo wins it and gives it to Silly Gardi. I failed to create too many chances in the second half because they had just completely slowed the tempo down and I could barely get the ball off them here. But as Martial and Fakir link up down the left hand side, the French drive goes down the left hand side, gets inside the area plays it across towards Lacadia but the goalkeeper for Sampdoria was having an absolute stormer another fantastic save it's still nil-nil and from the corner El Shirai crossed the ball in looks for Ryan Tyler who wins the header but it's cleared off the line and unfortunately for us in our first ever home game with Milan at the San Siro, we are held to a goalless draw by a stubborn Sampdoria side. So the Sampdoria defence held strong. They managed to get the clean sheet thereafter and the point, and the game does finish Milan nil, Sampdoria nil. So we spent £69.5 million pounds on new talent for this Milan side. We should not be drawing these games nil nil at home. I was really, really frustrated about this one. Just couldn't break down the Sampdoria defence. The goalkeeper played very well. Man the match, no doubt. My Martial did play quite well, just couldn't find the goal he needed to get his debut goal. And sadly, the game did finish as a goalless draw. Not what we want to see after spending £69.5 million. Pounds. But that is going to end today's episode of Career Mode, though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave likes. That's, of course, much appreciated. And it really is how much channel out because you don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.